What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another epic Soupy Poopy 69 YouTube video. As a person who grew up watching what I would consider to be the edgier side of YouTube, I've always kind of hated BuzzFeed. Not necessarily because I was a straight white male, but for quite a few reasons. The primary one being that they do such a shit job of presenting information, opinion, and stories to the point where I believe that considering them news is an insult to mainstream news media outlets. I feel like the term fake news is one that should be strictly reserved for BuzzFeed because in almost all aspects, it's in a caliber of its own. The bar is on the fucking floor when it comes to their content. Let's check out this uh, awesome article 18 Things Millennials Do That Are No Longer Cool Anymore, According to Gen Z, by Shelby Heinrich. Number one, wearing our hair in a side part. This is just somebody else's TikTok. Number two, wearing skinny jeans. It's just another TikTok. Numbers three, six, eight, 15, 17, and 18 are all just TikToks too. And the rest of them are tweets with little blurbs of text summarizing them. Number 13, liking bacon. She didn't add anything to this. Not to my tweet, not to anyone else's tweet, not even to the TikToks. This is just stealing. I won't lie. This is definitely me when I'm driving. I won't lie, this is definitely me when I like bacon. Her position under her name in the article is written as BuzzFeed staff, which is pretty vague. So I went over to her LinkedIn to see what her actual position was. Ah, so you're a staff writer, huh, Shelby? For someone whose self-proclaimed job title is a writer, you don't fucking write very much. Maybe you are a good writer. Maybe it was just an off day. A woman called out sexist men who are scared to have a daughter, and everyone needs to see it. Emma, a 17-year-old high school senior from Arizona, decided she'd had enough when she shared this TikTok calling out men on the app for saying they hope they don't have a daughter. That's awesome. I mean, sexism is a serious issue and your opinions and experiences are very valuable to the discourse in regards to such a sensitive topic. Good on you, Emma. In the TikTok, Emma explains that she's tired of boys saying they hope they don't have a daughter because of the possibility that they might wear a bikini or have a pair of boobs. Yeah, that stuff is pretty sexist, except Emma's the one that's saying it. I came here because I wanted to read what Shelby had to say about it. It's okay, Shelby, just take your time. I'm sure we'll get to your opinion at some point. She then goes on to explain why she would actually be scared to have a daughter. Another quote, now I'm getting a little annoyed. Quote, 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 quote from the comment section and quote from the creator. When the fuck does this turn into an article? The original TikTok is linked. Why would you link it if you're gonna transcribe the whole fucking thing? Providing context is one thing, but the video is a minute long. At this point, watching the TikTok would provide more context and take less time than just reading Shelby's shitty summary. It's not even a summary because she's not summarizing anything, she's just writing it verbatim. Between each one of these paragraph long quotes, Shelby includes a full vertical still from the TikTok, making the article appear even longer and creating more space for advertisements. When viewing the article on mobile, there are five ads, four of which come up just when reading Shelby's transcription of the TikTok. BuzzFeed made more money off of Emma's video than Emma did. I would be fine with that if it was transformative in some way, you know, maybe offering a new perspective, some commentary, but it's not transformative. Not that there's much to comment on. I mean, it's a one minute video. Shelby finds the tweets she steals um, just using the regular search option on Twitter. She'll go through and like all of the ones to mark them for later. And I only know this because she liked mine fucking five months after I posted it. And as soon as she finds uh, 20 mediocre tweets loosely related to the same subject, she makes her article. 25 jokes about Olive Garden that prove it's a very special place. See, Emma's experience with BuzzFeed was better than most. She got her own article, she got an interview, and most important, she was asked for consent. What if I told you 25 jokes about Olive Garden used to be 26? One time I tweeted about the time I attempted suicide and didn't want to be hospitalized because I had made plans to go to Olive Garden and BuzzFeed put it in an article about Olive Garden tweets as if that was the main point of my tweet. Now I don't think Shelby read this girl's tweet about the psych ward and thought, eh, this is appropriate to include in an article about Olive Garden. I think Shelby stopped reading the second she saw Olive Garden and 100,000 likes. I'd imagine that when you steal hundreds of tweets every week, they kind of start to blend together. Like when BuzzFeed is giving her her quota for the week, she doesn't hear 10 articles, she hears 170 tweets, 25 TikToks. Dude, if she ever got fired from BuzzFeed, she'd be fucked. Like actually fucked. Imagine her applying to a real news company 
saying, I was a senior writer over at BuzzFeed. And they ask her, oh, so what kind of stuff do you write? And she fucking hands them a list of 20 tweets made by other people. Here's a fun fact. The average Shelby Heinrich BuzzFeed article contains more advertisements than original thoughts. Imagine if all content could be stolen like this. Gen Z renamed Star Wars movies after the 90s sitcom Friends. I'm totally living for number two. Number five, the one where Luke fucks his sister. And then right under that little blurb, there's a fucking link to download the MP4. Obviously more time and money is put into major motion pictures than tweets. I believe the principle still applies. Stealing content is very bad and scummy. I think it becomes infinitely worse when it's being done by a media company that is profiting off of that stolen content. Especially when the person stealing the content has the balls to call themselves a writer. I'm a writer, guys. Oh, cool. Uh, what kind of stuff do you write? Titles, conclusions, uh-huh. Summaries. As if stealing content for one article wasn't enough, Shelby likes to reuse the stolen content. She took that uh, Millennials Are Uncool the Gen Z article and repurposed it into a BuzzFeed quiz. She even fucking took that original article and rewrote it in Spanish. Since the source of every tweet in the original article was in English, she couldn't cite them. Gen Z thinks it's uncool that Millennials worship bacon. Source Getty Images. Now I didn't make this video because I I'm sitting here angry at everyone who's ever stolen content, nor do I expect any of the ad revenue BuzzFeed has generated to go back to those content creators. It just really pisses me off seeing people who consider themselves professional journalists or professional writers stamping their name on collections of content that is not theirs. Finding funny tweets is not a, a talent, it's virtually effortless, and showing it off as your own content is just extremely lazy. Anyways, that's gonna do it for uh, this video. Um, um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, check out some of my other videos if you're new. Uh, I'll see you guys later. You're telling me none of the applicants have degrees in journalism? Ah, darn it. That sucks.